Something slightly different uh, here today. I've just come back from uh, a radio rally, first one I've been to in about 18 months, I think, in uh, in Chippenham, and it was a, a pleasant day out. And this is something I picked up for what I think is quite a reasonable price. I haven't seen one of these before. You'll see it's labelled up as a CB transceiver, but it actually covers, um, I think, 25 to 30 megahertz potentially. It's only AM and FM, no sideband with this. But what caught my eyes, I thought maybe it could be used for 10 meters, both AM and FM. I haven't seen this particular model before. I've since looked them up on the uh, the internet. There is some information about them. It's supposed to be in uh, pretty good condition. I haven't opened it up yet. And um, apparently it's uh, capable of up to 50 watts RF out. So anyway, let's have a look at uh, what we've got inside the box. And uh, we've got a, a manual. And uh, looks like we've got a piece of packing there. Power lead. Oh, yeah, there's the radio itself. The power lead is, is, is captive. It's not a plug in one, it's captive on the back of the uh, radio. But this is it. This is a, a TTI, apparently, TCB5289. Um, as I say, label up as a CB transceiver. It's apparently PC programmable. We've got squelch and volume control there and a channel control. And uh, various other functions along here. And in fact, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, the, the plastic um, protective covering is still on the display. So that's quite a good sign. And it uh, takes a, uh, what's that, uh, one, two, three, four, five, Five pin mic, five pin mic plug on the front. And on the rear, we've just got a um, the typical SO239 socket. We've got an external speaker socket there. And there's also a USB. So I think that's a, a mini a USB. So whether that needs a specific programming lead or not, I don't know. I've, I've found some software online for this radio. And I've also got a USB lead that will fit that. So we'll see later whether that will work just with the ordinary lead or it needs a specific um, programming lead, I don't know. So there it is, the um, 5289, TCB5289. The next thing we'll do is uh, we'll get it into the shack. Uh, we'll hook it up, we'll see whether it's programmed up and how it's programmed up. There's the uh, there's a microphone there, there's the up down buttons. And actually just looking in the box here I see um, there is a, a, a purpose made programming lead with this radio, so that's great. So we should be able to program it. And um, we've got a little mobile mounting bracket there and the um, bracket for the microphone mounts. So there it is, the uh, TTI TCB5289. And before we go any further, I should point out that this will not be legal to use on the CB bands. Um, it's um, not in any way approved for CB use. And apparently it'll do up to 50 watts out. You can see there's quite a, a substantial heat sink. It obviously covers CB frequencies and we could use it to monitor 27, but we couldn't legally transmit them. Okay, join me when the radio's in the shack and we'll see how it's looking. Okay, in the time on that fashion, I've uh, not read the uh, instructions at all. But what I have done, as you can see, I uh, put a couple of power poles on the uh, power lead of the radio. I've hooked it up to the power supply I normally use for my VX1700, so I know that's working okay. Turn the power supply on, and uh, let's work out how we turn the radio on. And there it goes. And okay, we've got power. And as you can see it says uh, VFO, so that's a good sign. And at the moment it's moving in 5 kilohertz steps. It's in AM mode. I'm going to switch my meter here up to the power setting and I'll move you up a little bit so that you can see the meter uh, we're in AM um, let's key the mic 
and okay we've got a little bit of uh, we've got a bit of power there we're on the 200 yeah and as we um okay as we modulate we're getting a getting a bit more and uh, yeah it's pretty close to 50 watts there I think um, let's try that hang on we're on the 200 watt scale um, so let's try again yeah we're just uh, just short of 50 watts so it doesn't look like there's been any programming done on this um, let's get the squelch down volume up we've got some receive signal uh, no idea how we change mode doesn't seem to be a mode button Oh well, the manual did have some useful information. It's the A stroke F key, and we're now on uh, FM mode. I don't know whether. Okay, so we obviously have a 10 meter FM repeater coming in there, see if there's any others, I'll just scroll for a second. Of course, the issue may be with this radio, if we can't um, set a split so that we can transmit on the input of the repeater, it's not going to be much use to us. But nevertheless, it sounds uh, quite a nice tone on, um, on FM on um, 620 there. So let's try pressing the memory button again. We're obviously there now on um, CB. Steps aren't going to be uh, correct for um, UK uh, FM, but we probably get close enough. Let's try, I think 781 would be channel 19. Let's take the scroll down there a bit. quite surprised to see a lack of activity on 27 and yet um, 29 is uh, alive and well so quite nice to see really now the antenna we're using is nothing special it's just um, a 5 8 wave silver rod it's um, just over 10 foot off the ground actually it works works very well when conditions are up um, if I was trying to use it for local um, CB work it would need to be a, a bit higher up really but um, for this sort of purpose it works well um, and there we have the uh, first FM repeater we've uh, received on the radio so looks like everything's working we're able to transmit I'll just um, take it down to a quieter Part of the band. Oh, I see it's programmed, so we're not in VFO mode now, are we? So, oh, how do we get back into VFO mode? Did it come out of. Again, this is a read the manual moment. Um, I don't really want to transmit on any repeater outputs. Um, just want to see what sort of power we'll get on, um, on FM. Okay, won't be much there. Let's just give it a, a CW coming in there. I'll just get out to the uh, beacon area of um, 10 meters. Let's go up there. Okay, let's give it a little blast of um, FM. I see we've got, um, well, it indicated it's over uh, 50 watts near. Uh, 60 I'd hopefully there's a way of turning this down that's quite a lot of power for the little radio to be putting out um, but um, 
quite impressive. We need to find what all these functions are about. We've got, uh, looks like we might have a tone squelch function, which is promising because that means we may be able to have a repeater, uh, some sort of repeater shift, but it doesn't actually say do anything, so possibly not. I don't know. Got some sort of uh, automatic squelch. Um, scan function maybe, yeah, that's a scan function, that's the AMFM memory dual watch uh, programming more oh, okay Roger bleep perhaps, I don't know ah, Roger bleep, that's what that one is, okay alright, okay so, a bit of a rambling on this, but uh, just sufficient to see that the uh, the radio is working and it's receiving, and it's uh, relatively sensitive and um, that's about as much as we can expect at the moment I think we definitely need to learn how to program it and how to use it so we could have a couple of issues with this if we want to use it as an armature set on 10 meters number one we're going to need to see if it has a, a split capability so that we can work repeaters like this it would be nice if it had um, tone squelch which I don't think it's going to have but I know some repeaters need that to open them but we'll have a look at that. I don't think it uh, claims to have that. Um, so the next step is to hook it up, I think, to the PC using the programming lead. And uh, we'll see what we can actually program into it and how to do it.